Hey everybody, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this uh, Gotham Info session. We're so grateful that you're here. Um, the video that you just saw gives you a little bit of a taste of the vision behind Gotham. Uh, this idea that the gospel has power to bring renewal in all spheres of life, in our personal lives, in our communities, in our world, in our work. And uh, so we're sharing that for the first time tonight. And uh, I think it gets to kind of the driving force behind why we uh, believe that Gotham is uh, a really valuable program to help us see how we can connect the faith that we hold dear to our everyday lives, to our work, to all these other um, spheres that maybe we, we struggle to see the gospel's impact on. So tonight we have a, a full schedule for this one hour info session. Um, my name is Ryan Christoffel. I am the Gotham coordinator. Uh, so it's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, tonight we are gonna give a little bit of the why behind Gotham. Uh, you'll hear about the application process. Um, you'll hear from several of the pastoral staff who are involved in Gotham um, on a week-to-week -week basic, uh, week-to-week -week basis, uh, providing pastoral care and guidance, and leading discussions around all the things that we uh, read and hear and and talk about at Gotham. Uh, you'll also get to hear from some alumni uh, who have been through the program before, and of course, we're going to have time for Q and A. And so um, we've got a full night. I'm grateful that you're here. Uh, I want to turn things over to Corey. He is the director of the Center for Faith and Work. He's going to give us a bit of an overview of Gotham. Great. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, as Ryan said, I'm Corey. I am the director of the Center for Faith and Work, and I uh, wish we could all be together in person, but yeah, this is the next best thing. So I just want to quickly introduce Gotham at, at kind of like a high level, like what it is, what we're about, and then just talk a little bit about some of the practical elements of the program. So I think at a high level, the primary problem that Gotham helps us solve really is the, the disconnect between our journey as Christians in the world and, and just what we do day in and day out. And so we don't often connect, I think, being a Christian with the day-to-day -day realities of our work. And when they overlap, it's often just, you know, about evangelizing our coworkers or thinking about doing really excellent work, which are, are really good things, but it, it's, it's, it's so much broader than that. And the reason I think we often keep those worlds or at least imagine those worlds as being different or separate is really a function of something that theologians call dualism. And dualism is, is essentially a, a separation of, of the world into these two kind of spheres. One, one is the sacred, all of the things that are spiritual, like faith, the church, and then the secular, which is everything that feels this worldly and material. And at the root of this, idea is really a view of the material world as like bad and evil and then the spiritual world as something that's like good right um which actually comes from some ancient heresies that never really went away but one of the consequences of dualism is really a belief that the only way to really serve god right um, is by working for the church or being a missionary or an evangelist and we see the church and everything it does as you know good and untainted while the secular world, the sort of world outside of the spiritual and the church world is bad and corrupted. But another consequence is that it kind of seals off um, our personal beliefs and faith from, from the way that we actually live and, and work in the world, right? Christianity is, you know, we see it as a means of, of individual spiritual peace and strength, but, but it, it's, we never really see it as a comprehensive interpretation or vision of reality that, that affects and impacts everything that we do. So as Christians, you know, we end up looking to our faith for personal salvation, um, but then the rest of our lives are shaped by popular culture or just the dominant worldviews of the time. So we end up not being able to integrate our faith and work in any real substantive way. And as Abe said, just in that video before um, that we just watched, God's purposes are, are, are much larger than we could ever imagine, right? He's not just saving our souls and, and sending us to heaven, which is why we sometimes see evangelism as the only real kind of spiritual work. But the good news of the gospel is that he's establishing his eternal kingdom on earth. And in the process, he is making, as Revelation 21 says, he's making all things new. He's, he's renewing the entire cosmos. So this means that the gospel changes not only our hearts, 
right? But it also works to renew the communities that we live in, the industries, the workplaces and the wider culture that we work in. So through our work in these places, we get to join God, right? In these larger redemptive purposes. And that's, that's why we structure Gotham in the way that we do. The curriculum is divided up into three main sections. We have the heart, community and world. And uh, we ask essentially the same question in each one, right? How is God at work renewing and restoring? And more specifically, just to get into some of the practical elements, um, that's kind of a larger picture. Gotham is, is, is essentially a nine month learning community. And its purpose is to broaden your understanding of and just deepen your connection to, to that redemptive work that God's doing that we get to join in. And we do this in three primary ways. We do it through theological training, we do it through spiritual and personal development, and we do it through um, community formation. So the theological element is we have a really robust curriculum. Um, we read primary texts like Augustine and Calvin, L Luther, C.S. Lewis. Um, we also read a lot of more recent works from a diverse array of authors on different topics. We have weekly teaching from Redeemer staff or other Christian leaders from around the country. Uh, you have a cohort that you'll be in for the whole time, um, and there are discussions and readings and, and lectures in that. Um, we we'll, we'll also get to engage in the culture and art of the city, which is really fun. The spiritual and personal development element is, um, you know, you'll have pastoral care and mentorship throughout the program. You'll have guided weekly devotional and spiritual formation practices that you'll take part in that will shape you. Um, we have, uh, you'll have a prayer partner that, that walks you through the program that's also in your cohort. We'll have a ton of projects, exercises, practices that you'll get to engage with and um, sort of apply the theological elements that were and the ideas and the values that we're, we're, we're wrestling through throughout the year. And then the community formation piece, um, it's really a community-based learning um, experience. And you do that a lot in your cohorts that you'll meet every day. You'll process life and work in the city. You'll process the readings, everything you're learning. All of the, there's so many group discussions and a lot of collaborative learning. Um, we have monthly dinners, outings, social gatherings. You have strong relationships with the instructors, with your mentors, with speakers. Um, very, very practically, we kick off in September with our first retreat. Um, it'll be out in Princeton, New Jersey. And we meet for about 26 sessions um, throughout the year. And, and those sessions are just over two hours each. And we don't meet every single week throughout that nine month period, but um, it, it works out to be about three days of each month on, on average. So they'll include a teaching time um, at the beginning, then you'll have some discussion, you'll have some sharing time and prayer time in each of those. We have a retreat in the winter, and then we also have an in-city retreat at the end and the commissioning here in the city in May. And throughout the year, we'll have these Saturday sessions each month, which will do more practical things. Um, we have an Enneagram workshop. We do an arts and culture trip to museums. This year we went to the Met. Um, we'll do a workshop on redemptive entrepreneurship through Praxis, this great organization. We have a day on the theology of sex and relationships. We have a Christmas party. And we'll also be taking part in a bunch of, you know, different small projects throughout the year to apply those theological concepts in, in real life, in real time. And that includes your cultural renewal project, which you'll, you'll pitch to your class and you can, um, it's essentially a competition and the winner gets uh, $5,000 of seed funding for that project. And there've been a, a lot of really cool projects come out of that. Um, there are, I know, I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions and we'll get into that later, but I know COVID is a big concern. Um, We've actually managed to meet all year um, in person th through this whole um, this whole class from September last year to now. Um, we've not had a single case of COVID that came directly from Gotham. You know, folks in our class got it and they stayed at home. Um, and as we move toward vaccinations and fewer restrictions on gatherings, I think we're, we're looking pretty good to have a fairly normal class this year. Um, if we have to wear masks and distance a little bit, we will continue to do that. Um, Applications are now open. They're open until April 30th. Um, we offer financial assistance to those who can't bear the full, full tuition costs. Um, at the beginning of the year, you'll receive a packet of readings, uh, books and guides um, that we're, we're developing and devotionals for the year. It's a decent commitment. So we just wanna make sure that, you know, as you consider it, you consider the, you know, the, the workload that it is and the, the commitment to the community as well. But I'm gonna, leave it there. I know there's going to be a lot of questions, but I just wanted to kind of dump that on you guys. Um, just a lot of information, bigger picture, some practical elements. We can get into some of the application process. Um, you can apply by April 30th. Um, we will let everyone know by May 31st. We'll have a, an interview and we'll review your application. We'll make you an offer and you can fill out the financial aid um, application a week later. Then we'll let you know a week later and then you'll have to make a decision by the end of that month. 
and then um, you're in and then you can start your summer readings and we have a couple of social events throughout the summer as well that um, will allow you to, to get to know the fellows that you'll be with all year so that's it for now um, what I'm going to do is invite a couple uh, well three um, fellows from the previous year G20 class um, we have Sylvia Steffi and Michael and if you guys want to unmute and say hi um, I'm, we're essentially going to do a bit of an alumni panel. So you get a sense of, um, what the experience is like being a fellow. I'm going to ask them a few questions and they'll answer as a panel. And, and you also have a little bit of time there to do some Q and a, um, you can ask them any questions you want. So you guys jump in as you feel like you want to Sylvia, Michael and Steffi. Um, but first question, why did you do Gotham? Like what, what prompted you to do it? Like what, what were you hoping for to get out of the program? I can go first, I guess. Um, hi guys, I'm Sylvia. Um, I wanted to do Gotham because I wanted to learn more about theology. I've always been a Christian. I grew up in the church um, and I felt like I had a good understanding of who God was. Um, but then sometimes I would hear people say things that didn't really fit with my idea of God. And then I would kind of look it up in the scripture and it would kind of be there, but then I didn't know how to make sense of it. So I felt like I needed to do a better job of studying and um, knowing who God is. I'm Michael. Um, there are a couple reasons why I want to do Gotham. One, like Sylvia, I wanted more uh, theological training and I had a couple roommates that had done the program and had really great things to say about it. Um, and I, so I wanted to um, really commit to reading more and have the support of learning within a community. Um, and then also, uh, I'm an actor and a sign artist at Trader Joe's and, um, I wanted to meet other people in other industries and really figure out how the challenges that they were meeting as far as being a Christian in the workplace and how they were figuring that out, um, and just make further connections with people in other industries. And I'm Steffi, um, and I think I would say as Michael and Sylvia also shared, like for me, the reason why I joined, um, part of it was really to learn more about theological aspect, but I think I was at a time in my life where I really needed more community and do uh, and learn more uh, about what that actually meant, the intentionality of building relationships, having a commitment, um, even, even, even applying to Gotham was a process all by itself because knowing that if getting accepted there was a commitment that lies behind that and, and I think um, with that came not only the theology aspect or the community aspect but also really learning more about Christ through all of these different areas and um, and for me it was very 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 life-giving um, to say the least. So was there a, a, a kind of a game changing or sort of breakthrough practice or concept of or, or idea or just like a moment um, from Gotham that that just sort of was like an aha moment, like it sort of changed course. Some, you learned something that really like altered the course of the of your sort of your journey or your theological framework. Hmm. I think for me, one of the big turning points, a couple, would have been the mid-year retreat where we really talked about, um, uh, really examined sin in our lives and the power of that, and really talked about um, idols. And it was really eye-opening to see how ingrained some of my idols are in all aspects of my life. Um, and also reading uh, John Murray's Redemption, Accomplish and Apply, that book um, kind of was really challenging for me, but really good. I really enjoyed that. I think for me was um, the, the three different parts which stand out up until now. Yes, one was the mid-year retreat, which was like just really understanding sin and how it plays out and like how my how little it could be but yet how deep the roots of that little um, actually are. And also there was, um, we, had a, we had a teaching. I can't remember whether it was, I think it was more towards um, 
like towards the end about common grace and that, that how that plays in our lives and and what it looks like and I think for me that was very um very like changing and important to see I think also because in terms of the work that I do when I work with um I work with trafficking uh, survivors and my my career has been with gender-based violence for past 11 years now. And so I, I don't think I saw it. Um, I, I think that just going through Gotham and seeing my work and seeing what I do, uh, more of God's work in that, right? Whereas at one point, I really didn't see it that way. Just saw it more as this is a field that I like and that I fell into kind of coming out of college. Uh, but, you know, it, it just had a different perspective. Um, and, and even now, like how my how my work plays out now after having gone through the program. Um, for me, the moment that I think this kind of was a game changer was when I read John Owen's Mortification of Sin. Um, that book, I think I just like cried, <laughs> to be completely honest. I think I just cried for like two days because um, I think... Um, it really helped me understand the insidious nature of sin. I think even though I know that I am a sinner, I somehow equated it just to like actions. And somehow I was able to justify myself because you don't, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, but then it really helped me understand. It's like, oh, it's my approach to things. It's my perspective. It's my attitude or the way that I view people or the way that I treat people or circumstances. Um, so kind of help reading that book and processing it out with my community was actually a really good thing. And I don't think I have a specific moment in this case, but throughout the nine months, I think I came to understand the importance of community. It was not something that I, I didn't really value it before. I think I was like, well, I have my friends, so I'm fine. Um, but then just knowing the intentionality behind community and people who are praying for me and people I can pray for was something that um, I started to understand throughout the program. Do you guys think that Gotham um, changed, I guess, the way you saw yourself or, um, or your community or even God in any, any sort of like profound ways? Yeah, I think, um, I think for me was even through our, our, I was in a triad of prayer partners. And I think just getting to know them more and having them give me feedback in terms of my personality and how certain things, things I did and, and, and even fears I had, but it was just so so good to hear from people that knew that their intention was just for me to have growth as opposed to from coming from a critical point and even seeing God's love and God's grace and understanding of that, of God's bigger picture that I didn't actually see before that it, I wouldn't have actually um, let people uh, give me that feedback unless I had a really, really like a strong connection with them, which I think I was able to develop in, in that triad that I had. And friends that I am really good friends still now. Yeah, to echo what Stephanie was saying, um, and a little bit of what I just said before, the intentionality behind the community was something that really shaped um, my understanding of God because he exists in a community as well. And also I think it helped me um, see myself in a more realistic way understanding that I am a sinner, but I am also a beloved daughter of God and um, just how that works itself out on a day to day. Um, yeah. I think it helped me um, think about a larger framework of what we're doing here on earth now and how that's contributing to um, God's call, like the great commission to work toward that new Jerusalem, especially as an artist. Um, and also, um, you know, it's, it's hard when you 
want to do work, but either the opportunities aren't there right now. So then it was helpful in Gotham to realize it might not matter exactly what I'm doing, but how I'm doing that, I can still have um, a really big impact in the world with, with people and in, in, um, in community and just reflect better reflecting God's kingdom, no matter what the actual task is. Yeah, I love that. So now that you've gone through Gotham and you're alum, how do you find yourself approaching work differently? There are times where I stop way more often than I did before and actually take time just to pray or think about things in a different way. Um, and I think it's overall, overall given me a greater sense of, of gratitude for even just the opportunities that we have to work. Um, for me, I think it um, allowed me to, I think I take more time to think about God and his activity in my life. Um, and, and maybe in like the little things, like um, like being able to wake up today, that he gave me this day today, or being able to recognize that the sun rises and sets when he commands it to, or the wind is blowing, um, and in the way that he, um, where he tells it to go. And, and I think that affects my work because I'm able to approach it not in a, um, Oh man, I'm lost for words now. <laughs> um, not in a way where it's like, um, I need to do the best that I can, but how is God working in my life? And how can I, as a, as a designer, um, do the best that I can and do it to contribute to his kingdom? Oh man, I hope that made sense. <laughs> totally. I think for me, um, to be very honest, sometimes in my job, there is so much doubt about where God's at because there is so much, um, I think at one point there was so much like, where are you God? Like, how did you let these this thing, this happen? Like, why are there people having to go through such sufferings and so, and such really hard things in life that, you know, we, we don't often see unless we're hearing it. And in my case, hearing it from clients firsthand. And, and so I think that after the program and kind of understanding that and really uh, seeing it as a whole and seeing God's grace and even seeing God's grace in those, in the suffering and, and knowing that he really is present, even if we don't understand, and even if we don't know what that looks like, it really taught me how to lament more and still be able to be present in that suffering, which would be for, in this case, serving my clients, um, the ones that I, you know, in the past or in now in the present and currently. So I think, yeah, it's just, and I think that it goes even beyond that. Um, uh, just kind of seeing his sovereignty larger and, and at the same time, me being able to come to God with all these questions without, without having some sort of like, oh, you can't bring that to God. No, on the contrary, his grace and is, is so sufficient even in that, that I, that I can. Well, thank you guys. I, I before we introduce the pastoral team um, and the, the, the leaders of the cohorts, I just want to give any of you um, on the call just a chance to ask a specific question to any of the, the, um, the, the alum that just shared on the panel. If any of you have a question, um, you can either put the hand up or you can just unmute yourself. We'll have a few minutes for just some Q&A. We'll do a bigger Q&A at the end about the program, but so just anything you have to ask, Sylvia, Michael, or Sandy. Yeah, Michael. Hey, uh, this is a question from Michael. I, I, I know Michael from my church and he invited me here tonight. Um, <clears throat> What are your thoughts or what are anybody's thoughts? Like Michael, I'm an actor and 
<clears throat> I work mainly in television, but it's all been shut down since last March. So like, what would I get from a program about <clears throat> incorporating my faith into my work if I don't have any work? Does that make any sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's, uh, well, first, I don't think this is going to be, it's not going to be forever. Um, and I think we will get back to work, um, especially as um, I think vaccines come out. And I don't know, I'm just more hopeful than I, than I was for a while here uh, in the midst of the pandemic. Um, and I think, I mean, not only did it change my, the way I view work, but there are people in the program who I met who I think have the potential to be lifelong friends. So I think the community aspect of this, uh, of this program is a, a great strength. So even if in the moment, it might not necessarily relate to the work immediately, I think the impact it can have on your community and your theological knowledge, and also just laying the groundwork so that when you do go back to work, you can be prepared or have a new set of tools in your tool belt, you know? Mm. That's great, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for the panel about their experience? I have one. I think for anybody uh, on the panel, what was your biggest misconception going into Gotham? Like what, did, what were you expecting that it actually wasn't? For me, I kind of expected it to be more just all theology and assignments and training. And I was actually surprised by some of the social aspects and actually how close I got to some of these people, especially because I'm not involved in the Redeemer community because I don't go to a Redeemer church, I go to a, a neighboring church. Um, so I, yeah, I wasn't expecting to really come to love some of the people that I met in this program. Yeah, I'm gonna say the same thing as Michael. He just said, I didn't expect the community aspect of Gotham to be as big. I thought it was gonna be more of like a mini seminary type. Um, so I was actually quite annoyed in the beginning when we put a lot of emphasis on community because I was like, that's not really what I was here for. Um, but it turned out to be something very, very important and life-giving to me. And I also think that I thought everyone in the program were gonna be, um, like everyone who just works in corporate America, but it turns out to not be the case. And I think that was really important to see that there were other actors like Michael or, you know, someone like Steffi, who's like a therapist, um, or um, there was also like a, a stay-at-home mom. And that was just really interesting to see how we are all tackling the same thing, but from different angles. I think for me, coming into Gotham, I was coming with really like a really open mind and really open in terms of expectations. I didn't really come in and say like, I'm expecting this to go, but I was just really in it for the ride. Like I just, when I, when I registered and when I finally accepted and, 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 and got into the program, I was just more about like, so what now? Like what's happening now? Like I, I will say like when we got the summer rating list, I was like, okay, this is a lot <laughs> um, because it is. And I think, it's part of that commitment. Um, I don't know, but at, in, in our year, there was a really thick green book that we got um, that the previous class was like, well, that's the green monster. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's great. <laughs> so I think that um, was probably like the, the, the workload when it came to that um, could be a little bit like, oh, well, what's gonna happen? How are we gonna do this? But you know what, it, it's manageable as long as there's intentionality throughout, it, it, it's able, you're able to do it. And if you don't get to do one thing, like, you know, you pick it back up. But I think um, for me, going back to that, I was very open to, to everything. And I think, um, I think I got, I got out so much more than I 
wanted or expected um, in, in the little expectation, even if I had one. Thank you guys, really appreciate you sharing. Um, and yeah, you guys will hang around until the end. So if, if, if anyone has more questions, we can, we can ask them at the end. They'll, we'll all hang out um, after, after eight o'clock. But I wanna quickly introduce the uh, three pastoral staff that, and I'm, I'm one of them, um, that look after downtown and LSQ and uh, east side and west side. And so I wanna introduce Mila and Jeff and Judson, and they're just gonna quickly introduce themselves, say hi, and tell you a little bit about um, their involvement. So I'll hand it over. Mila, you wanna jump in? Sure. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Mila, and uh, I uh, work for Redeemer Westside. I'm a senior director for discipleship and for faith at work, and I've had a joy to lead Gotham for three years, and I uh, absolutely love it. It's, uh, and I don't say it just because, you know, it's my job. I, it, it is really a great program, and it's been such a joy to be part of it. I worked uh, 12 years in uh, global um, sales and marketing and corporate strategy. I used to work for technology and uh, loved it a lot. But then um, God called me to seminary, a very interesting turn of things in my life 10 years ago. And for the last 10 years, well, that's kind of how I came to the U.S. and studied at Fuller and uh, after graduation, I started working for a local church in LA and have been now in New York City for the last three years. And um, I think that's partly why I'm so excited about faith and work because it really combines two of my big passions and kind of uh, what I really believe in. I, I loved corporate world and I actually thought I'm, I'm just gonna always stay there. I had no reason not to be there if, if it hadn't been for the Lord. And, and even, even when I was in seminary, I kind of thought I was good, I'm going to go back to corporate and, and who knows, I might go one day. But in this season, when I'm, when I'm working for a church, I'm so excited I've been able to serve in the capacity where I'm with people who, um, who are in situations, in a lot of the situations where I used to be in my old life and, uh, and yet being able to have this opportunity to learn together to see Jesus in the middle of daily life. And I think like, think back, um, that had there been something like Gotham, the years that I was, uh, I was working in corporate, that would have been so helpful. Like in a lot of ways, I felt like, um, you know, I had my faith and I had my uh, church community and then I had my work. And, but learning to kind of see what difference Jesus actually makes in my daily life in, the relationships that I have at work, they're kind of even the uh, projects that I was doing, the ways I was actually contributing to a lot of different areas that what, why would that be different? Because, because of Jesus. Um, and was there any difference? And if there wasn't, why not? So, and why would, why would that matter that I would, I would work, go to work every day? And um, so, Anyway, I'm super passionate about this. Um, I do, uh, honestly, I think this is, yes, as uh, some of the alumni have said, yes, it's work. Yes, it's investment. Um, you can't take it lightly, but gosh, is there anything in life that you get for free? I think all the best things we've needed to invest something in and it's so worth it. Like it literally, um, I feel like it's every person, and I've seen, as I said, this is a third round. So by now, I'm I'm seeing close to 150 people go through it, and and I would every single one would have said that it's it's definitely worth it, worth it in in ways that they never thought it would be. But anyway, that is um, not to try to oversell it in any way, but I am very excited about it because I do believe very strongly in it. Thanks, Mila. Judson, you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm Judson. I'm I'm on the east side. I work with uh, with young adults and youth, and do some formation work and everything. And my background in ministry is sort of primarily with uh, youth ministry and some prison ministry and pastoral ministry of sorts. And before being in the ministry world, I uh, I worked for a, a, a toy company startup uh, doing kind of marketing and um, did some photography work and uh, even some construction. So I've I've had some uh, fun kind of 
uh, jobs in the past and really enjoy ministry now. Um, I think because maybe because I, you know, I work with youth, I've, I've, I've been told I'm supposed to bring some youthful, uh, energy to this. So, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, you know, Gotham, Gotham slaps it, you know, it's vibey, you know, no cap it's, it's dope. It's, (laughs) I don't know, but, um, (laughs) but Gotham is really great. I really, I really love Wow. Steffi's laughing too hard at that. That's, that's so tough. Um, but Gotham is wonderful. Uh, I, I think like um, like Sylvia and Michael talked about, the community is just really, really special. I think to have this kind of uh, rare community of Christians really devoted to one another and committed to this wonderful city we're in and um, sharing this sense of purpose or at least this this shared desire to uh, you know take their work seriously. And um, it, it just is a really, really special community and watching the Holy Spirit sort of knit um, this group of, of different people together each year is just such a gift. So um, the community is just really a wonderful part of Gotham. And I hope all of you uh, want, want to join. And then I guess I'll hand it off to Jeff. Last but not least. You're muted. <laughs> Welcome to my life. I'm mute. My, I thought I'd unmuted myself. In any event, hey, my name is Jeff White. I am currently the senior lead pastor at the downtown congregation, but uh, I love Gotham. I think if I were to put it in a word, it's, it's actually all about liberation. It's about liberation into a healthy and a holy and a beautiful spirituality, which is to say it's about living a robust and vibrant human life, because uh, that's what Jesus came uh, to, to bring about, not to make you religious or to make you Christian, but to make you human again in the most profound and beautiful and alive way. And that means an integrated life where your work and your play and your church life are, uh, are part of a, a single whole cloth um, where your life isn't fragmented. And so I think that's what Gotham is designed to help you lead is a non-fragmented life. And um, uh, so uh, I think when all is said and done, um, then you will be people who leaven our churches with a healthy and holy and beautiful spirituality. And um, I think uh, that that's a, a great gift to give to the churches. So not only in going to Gotham, are you giving yourself the gift of, I think, being liberated into living the human life as God intended it to be lived, but you are giving a gift to your churches as well. Thank you, Jeff. And thanks, Mila and Judson as well. So um, you've heard from us. Um, we, I hope this gives you a, a real sort of sense of what the Gotham Fellowship Program is all about um, at, a, at, a, at a high level. And I know I gave some details at the beginning there about um, really specific logistical stuff, but I just wanna open up for the next um, 15 minutes until we officially close. And then we'll also hang around after that for, for those who need to go at eight, um, you guys can, can bow out. But I wanna open it up now for just any questions you guys have for me or for the alum or for Jeff, Amila, Judson, um, any, any questions at all about the program or about Gotham as a whole, um, go ahead and unmute or, or raise your hand. And we're happy to jump in and answer them for you. Michael, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> what would you say the uh, average weekly time commitment would be to the readings and to the meetings? If you, yeah. could, you could quantify that. Yeah, great question. I think the, the best way to sort of see it as taking uh, just less than like a single class, right, at, at college or grad school, um, you have readings that shouldn't take more than a few hours per week. Sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes it's less than that. Um, Sometimes we have a couple articles. Sometimes we have a a small book. Um, So, you know, three to five hours perhaps of reading. Um, Each week you're meeting for two hours and 15 minutes. Um, The days and times will vary based on your cohort and your church affiliation. So there's the teaching time and the time you have in your cohort. So that's two hours and 15 minutes. Um, And then just once a month, we have the Saturday sessions, which are five hours on Saturdays. and then, yeah, the, the three retreats. But on average, I would sort of ha- 
how do you expect it? It happened throughout the year. Is that right? Sorry, say that one more time. <clears throat> yeah, I think either my internet is breaking up or yours is. But the three retreats are sort of spaced throughout the year, yes? That's right, yeah. The September, so in the fall, then we do one in the winter in January. They're three-day retreats, and then we do one again in May. So they're, they're broken up. Um, and then the Saturday sessions are once a month. So that's just five hours on a Saturday. And we usually hang out and have dinner after that as well in our, in our groups. So yeah, I just imagine it you're like less than a college class. Um, it's not overwhelming, um, but it's a decent commitment. Um, you know, there's also devotionals that you'll do every day. We give you, um, that's part of your spiritual formation as well. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, of course. I have a question. Um, yeah. Does Gotham require you to have been a New York City resident for a certain amount of time before joining? Yeah, we, we ask that the fellows have a commitment to the city. Um, if you've just moved here, that's, that's okay. Um, as long as there is an intention to sort of stick around. And, um, you know, if you're just like, I'm here for a year doing an internship, it, it might not make sense for you to be embedded in a program that's so New York specific. But if you've just moved here, totally fine. If you're like, I'm here, this is my city. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but we ask that, you know, something that we require of the fellows is just that there's, a, there's some level of commitment to the city. But yeah, if you've just moved here, you totally qualify. Vanessa. Vanessa. So uh, related question, Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, north. So if you're not in New York City, but the train stations down the street from your apartment, um, does that count as greater New York City area? What do the New Yorkers say? What do you think? Wow. <laughs> does it count? Oh, guess it it's down. <laughs> oh, it counts. <laughs> um, you know, we, if you, this is a tricky one. It's sort of a case by case basis. If your life is in New Jersey and you don't work in, in the city and you're not really often in the city, it may not make a lot of sense for you. But if you're, if, if you work here, if you're very close to the city or, you know, we're open to that. The, the challenge that's been in previous years is that Jersey folks have, have done it, but then they'll won't turn up as much because, you know, they're like, well, I have to commute and that gets more of a bother later on. And we don't want that we don't want that to be a, a, a barrier for you. So if your life is in the city, you commute a lot, you're, you're close to the city, you're okay with it, like totally fine. Like I have friends that live in Jersey City. It's, you know, they're New Yorkers. I don't, maybe that's a controversial thing to say, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a case by case basis. If you're way out in Jersey and you're hardly ever in the city, it may not make sense. But if, if you're kind of like, you consider yourself to be part of the metro area, then it makes sense. Sarah. Can you talk a little bit more about how the cohorts are structured or how you put people together in those groups? Yeah, great question. And the, the pastors can jump in here as well, but we've essentially um, structured them around the four Redeemer churches that participate. So if you are affiliated as a member or an attendee at any of those four Redeemer churches, you'll be in that specific cohort. So Miller, for instance, leads the West Side cohort, Jeff leads the downtown and so on. So you'll be in that cohort with other folks from your church community. Um, and if you're a neighboring church, you know, we've always had tons of neighboring church folks. Sometimes it's half and half, but um, you'll also be in a cohort with other neighboring church folks. And depending on the makeup of the groups, um, you might also have a couple of neighboring church folks in your, in your group. But primarily, if you have an affiliation with one of the churches, you'll be um, in the cohort for that church. And if, if any of the pastors want to jump in and talk about what that experience is like and um, Please jump in. Well, I can I can say that part of that part of the reason why we do it in that way is to build that community that will be lasting. So once the year is over, you you continue to be part of the same church family, and you can actually continue to to build something in your your home church, and that can you know that can that can be a very very interesting thing that you don't just look at it as a, it's a nine month experience together with this bigger class. So you meet in their weekly basis in cohort, but you have all these Saturday sessions and the retreats and all of that happens with everybody together. So you have an opportunity to, to get to know really well the family members 
and then you have this extended family that you hang out with but once the year is over there is there is a ability to kind of keep um kind of going forward and and also building closer relationships with the uh, the leadership of the church and pastoral staff from west side for example uh, over the past few years i always made sure that our different pastors come and visit and give some of the lectures but also get to get to know the cohort members and in that way um, there is a there is just a lot lot happening also with a local church and and gotham i think you have a really unique opportunity to get to know the pastors of the church really well which i think is is pretty unique um for a church experience but i don't know if sylvia or michael or steffi you felt that or had an experience with that feel free to jump in but Any other questions? You can ask anything. About like how many people, I guess it depends on where everyone's at, how many people are in each cohort? Yeah, so we're aiming for a, uh, a class of 80 fellows this year and each cohort will have about 16 people in the cohort. We feel like that's a, a number that we don't wanna go beyond. Um, it, it gives you a chance to get to know people fairly well um, without it being too big. Um, so you'll have about 16 that might vary sort of give and take a few here and there, but it's around that. Um, this year we have 11 a couple of them have 12, but, um, we're increasing that by a few this year. And then you'll be, you'll, you'll join the rest of the fellows, um, on, on the Saturday sessions and at the retreats, you'll get to know them and you'll see them in other places too, other social events and stuff. Yeah, Michael. I have lots of questions, as you can see. Um, <laughs> so I, I liked that Michael gave me a little bit of optimism and hope that that show business might might come back sooner rather than later. And if that's true, and I'm sure you're right, Michael. Um, <clears throat> you know, the work is very irregular. It's not on a regular schedule and requires me to go out of town. Right. So uh, how much would uh, an irregular schedule and maybe working out of town interfere with with uh, doing this uh, program. Yeah, and maybe Michael, you can speak to that if you had that experience. Um, generally, I mean, we know that the, we try to be flexible with folks who are in that kind of situation, but um, we also say that, you know, if you feel like you're going to be out of town for a significant amount of those dates, and the classes, it just may not make sense for you. Um, right. It's, I mean, it's, right it's now there's hard. there's nothing happening. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's something that we we sort of just have to work with you on a case by case. Um, we can sort of look at what your schedule might be, what you sort of imagine you could miss, when you think, what days you think you would be working when you're away, and mm -hmm. sort of figure it out with you. But there comes a point where it's like, well, we're, I'm going to be gone for 40, 50% of these classes. It just yeah, of course. won't make sense. Yeah. So it just really depends and we can work with you on that. Okay. I don't know, Michael, if you had. I didn't have very much acting work when I was doing it, but one of my prayer partners um, is a professional bass player. Um, so he would have some gigs sometimes where he would like miss one class here if he knew about it ahead of time and was able to follow up and, uh, either get notes from someone else from the lecture. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm doing regional theater jobs anymore. Mainly it's TV. Right. So, you know, I just might have to miss like two or three days working. Right. Or if I get sent to some other location, it would be done within a week. Yeah. So does that, I mean, Michael, cause you, you sort of know the job. Does that sound workable or? I think potentially, yeah. And I think like Corey said, it would depend of like how regular, I mean, hopefully you're working all the time, you know? So, right. it, it, you know, it's one of those like catch 22 things where right. uh, hopefully most of your work would be in the city. So you could be there on whatever day your cohort is meeting, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we, we, okay. we can work with you, you very much. chat some more specifically with you about your particular schedule. Okay, thank you. I did see there was a question about calendar and schedule. Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to send you guys an email after this and give you last year's 
calendar and curriculum overviews, just so you have a sense of what it looks like. We're still finalizing the dates for this year, but it'll essentially uh, be really close to that. Um, so we'll send out a, a sample, but essentially September to May. Um, and I can give you guys um, specifically, so Labor Day weekend is when it begins. So September four to six is our first retreat and it finishes on Memorial Day, um, which is May 20th to 30th. Um, and then in between there, there's the 26 classes, but we can give you um, the full schedule really soon, but we'll send you the sample from last year. So just so you have a sense of what it looks like, what it feels like. And we're currently working on our new website, which will have all of this very, very soon. <laughs> we're hoping it would be live today, but it's the bane of my existence right now. If anyone's um, built a website. <laughs> I yeah. feel your pain because I've, spearheaded two website redesigns and it is not easy work um yeah. you want to help us <laughs> sure maybe <laughs> <laughs> um just really quick the the yep. weekly so it's encouraging that you guys have been able to meet in person this last year especially because there's just so much not in person um mm -hmm. so that's actually super encouraging usually the weekly sessions is it sort of a hybrid thing or are all of the sessions like lectures um not i'm assuming the retreats of course are in person but weekly sort of lectures are those also in person in the city yeah everything's been in person this year um, which we've been really thankful for redeemer owns a building so we've been using that building on the west side um we have really strict protocols in place we have to um you know answer a questionnaire when we come in about our um symptoms and things like that our temperature is taken then we sit in the auditorium six feet apart everyone wears a mask so we have all the sort of like procedures in place and it's worked really well um hopefully we won't have to do all of that um come september but you know we'll see if we need to do masks and distancing we will continue to do that for sure um, but everything this year has been in person and we're really thankful that you know we've had no major issues with it so yeah and i don't know uh Jeremiah Clapp, did you have a question? I do. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I went through, I'm, I know that it's on the website, so I don't want to make you go through all of the financial aid stuff. Um, but as I was looking through, I wanted to clarify uh, the uh, financial aid, uh, aid as it pertains to, to married individuals. Is mm -hmm. that for if both partners are taking the class that there's a financial opportunity there? Or is it just anyone who's married um yeah just we just want to celebrate your marriage by giving you a 50 percent discount <laughs> no we are we <laughs> I was like, if, I was you, like, if you want I'm... single people get 75 percent off this no <laughs> um if, if you both do it you you get 50 percent off so yeah. yeah it's that's what i had wondered i was like i, yeah. I wanted to clarify yeah. <laughs> like, that makes more sense than the other but i was like hey maybe they yeah. just, maybe they just get it like you know yeah no, I don't. I think we'd anger some single folks. Um, yeah. Okay. So it, we're officially done, but we're going to hang out here. We're all going to hang out. So if you guys have more questions, um, I know there's another question here, but we want to just, you know, offer you free to leave right now, but um, we're going to keep going and answering questions if you have any more. So thank you for those who need to pop off and really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, email us, gotham at redeemer.com. Um, go to you know, faithandwork.com forward slash Gotham for any details and yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to share uh, this slide real quick with some potential next steps for people. So the Gotham application is open. Uh, you can go to faithandwork.com slash apply to fill out that application. The deadline is April 30th. Um, we have coming up in April, a couple opportunities for people who are interested to come visit our current Gotham classes that are meeting each Sunday. Um, you can come on April 18th or April 25th. Uh, you can register for that at faithandwork.com slash Gotham Day. Um, as you've kind of heard tonight, there's a whole lot more to Gotham than just those weekly meetings. And so it's not like you can really get the full Gotham experience by coming for one two hour, 15 minute day. Um, but if you're interested in that, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, and again, as Corey said, additional questions, feel free to reach out. We'll have more information for you in a follow-up email. Um, but uh, otherwise, like you said, we're officially going to stop here for anyone who needs to leave, but we're also going to hang around for 
continued questions. So feel free to, to stick around if you'd like to.